Howdy everybody, thank you for tuning in. How are we all doing today? So, today I'm going to have a quick look at the, a second look, I should say, at the Celestron Astromaster 102AZ and in particular how to set it up for prime focus photography. So I'll just explain what prime focus photography is and then how to connect an SLR, a DSLR or even a mirrorless camera to it. So just a recap of this scope, it's a 102mm aperture, it's a 660mm f5.5 focal length. In other words, when you connect a DSLR to this camera using prime focus, prime focus it means no eyepiece used, your, your camera becomes the eyepiece, you have a 660mm f6.5 telephoto lens. And how much would you pay for a, a dedicated DSLR lens for, for something of that, of that specification? Oh, okay, this is a bit more cumbersome, uh, manual focus and aperture and everything but you should get some very nice results in particular if you use shoot in raw files and uh, do some and you're, you're pretty handy with editing afterwards but maybe that's another topic so anyway let's have a look at the business end of this scope and very similar to the Star Travel 80 the Skywatcher that they, they they always say they have a direct direct SLR connection and all that is is a T thread here so you can put your camera T adapter on for whichever camera you're using as mentioned you can use SLR, DSLR and also the modern mirrorless cameras that a lot of them come with their own adapters and um, just take notice of the setting in your camera you, you might need it to adjust the settings to let the camera know that you are not using a camera lens uh, to take the photographs so but maybe going into that into more detail we'll, we'll do another video. So basically what you do is you get a T adapter for whichever camera you, camera you are using. In this case I'm using an old Pentax K film camera lens just for an example. So it puts it on there. Don't, don't, don't have to over tighten it that, 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 that's how you ruin threads. And then, then you take your camera and he says simply red dot on the T-ring to red dot on the camera just as if you're connecting it to a normal camera lens. There we go. Phew. This was not my first take. I had a few attempts at doing that nice and smoothly but that is how you do it. And a good, the two good things about this Astromaster 102, one, unlike uh, the Star Travel 80 where depending on which camera you use you might need to use a little bit of an extension tube and um, I think I've mentioned them in a previous video to uh, to, to 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 get enough uh, in, 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 outward travel. With this one, I found around about there gives you infinity focus. There's an absolute ton of focus either way, so there's plenty of room to to get your camera in focus without the use of any more adapters. And so another good thing with this the Astromaster 102AZ is that it accepts two inch eyepieces and that's an advantage for two reasons. One, obviously you can put much larger wide field eyepieces in and a lot of people say that once you go to two inch eyepieces you never turn back. But also, as you can see, I've, I've got this camera in the landscape position. Maybe it wouldn't have been like that when you first put it on the camera. It may have been at a slant. And with the Skywatch the Star Travel 80 for example, you would then have to on the T-ring itself, undo the little grub screws and, and turn it round that way. And be believe me, if you drop grub screws into a little into a carpet floor, they well, all mine do anyway. They disappear into another dimension, the third dimension or whatever, and you never see them again. But with this one, with it being a two-inch focuser, two little grub screws on either side, slacken them off, not too much, or else your camera will fall off. Move it round and tighten it up. And that's easy as that for connecting your DSLR camera. Now, as, as per all, all cameras using this sort of photography, it's always best to use a either a, a, a release mechanism, uh, whether it's electronic, uh, manual, like with the old film camera lenses, or, or you can use a self-timer. Uh, because every time, no matter how sturdy the mount, you just 
do a little bit of pressing like that and that will, will definitely sh shape the image so bear that in mind. So what sort of images can you take with this setup? Well you can take some really nice landscape images, wildlife from a distance providing you're, you're pretty good with focus and I know you can't do it with this camera but with DSLR cameras always use mag uh, live view that gives you the more accurate focus if it's in particular for astronomy. And talking of astronomy, don't just think that using this little setup is for the moon and planets. You, you may get away with the moon with this because you don't need that much magnification. Get your focus bang on and you'll be able to crop the image. Maybe it's a bit too short like focal length for planets photography. But as I've, I've said to a lot of people, either here on YouTube, on my Facebook pages and, and over the phone to people giving advice, there's more to the night sky than moon and Jupiter. And with this setup, without actually a driven mount, you can take some very nice shots of the brighter stars. It's today's modern cameras with very, very high SO, ISO um, quality and clarity and lack of graininess, and also processing afterwards to, to reduce that uh, noise, with just a, a, a single second or one or one to two seconds exposure, maybe three, you might get away with it without any star trailing, I'm not sure, but even with one second exposure, high ISO, you can get some fantastic photographs of the stars, the brighter stars, you know, definitely give it a go, you, you, you'll get a surprise. The tricky thing with that will, will be focusing, and it will take a lot of practice and patience to use magnified live view on a star try to focus it on in, it, on, uh, in on it while it's moving across the screen. Believe me, it's not easy. Not too bad if you're on a, a, driven, a driven mount and you can put this OTA on a driven mount. No problem at all. So I hope that helps, show, shows how to connect a, an SLR camera or DSLR etc to the Astromaster 102AZ. Give it a go. The uh, link in the description will show you if this telescope is available to purchase from us or not and uh, you're very welcome to visit our website so thank you very much for watching and we shall see you next time